East Lehigh before that neighborhood what it is today, North Philly. It was still Polacks and Germans living around there. Okay, I went through hell. I went through hell racism in this country. My parents couldn't even speak in front of nobody Spanish because they tell you, speak English. And I couldn't, I couldn't understand what they told my mind. And my mom used to whisper to us in Spanish in public, whisper to us. I couldn't even get free lunches in school and they were free. That's when there was 15 kids in the class. Why do you think I didn't get free lunches? Because I was Latino. There was no Latinos in this country when I was here. That's when 20th and Green down there was all Boricuas. Mm -hmm. And they took them all out. Now it's the suburbs up there. Okay? I went through racism in this country. I, was, I, was, I grew up in black neighborhoods. I'm from Pike, 8th and Pike, 8th and Buckley. Okay? That's where I'm from. That's a black neighborhood. Okay? I went to black, black, black schools, black neighborhoods. So how the hell am I racist? But I fucked me a couple black girls. <laughs> but, 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 do you, but do you understand, like, to people, for example, in the UK, for example, to people in the UK, or to people in Australia, mm -hmm. come on, how you gonna think they're gonna dirty the water and then drink it? They dirty, they racist too. So when you call... How many of you champions in Europe? American champions. Mm. How many be on star promotion in Europe? American team, you got and let them go out there as an opponent. Yeah. How many you see? That picture on, on, on Instagram, Explore page a couple days ago, 20 Chinese champions. How many Americans you seen on that? Mm. So, but do you understand so like how, races? like huh? do you, like, I'm trying- Chinese restaurants around here in the hood, Chinese restaurants, go see their apartments upstairs, see their renting. Empty pigeons live in them, because they scared to rent to the blacks and the Latinos. Mm -hmm. And you don't know what the hell they sell us. Cause you get beef and uh, uh, you get barking and beef and you get a whole lot of beef. But the last time I remember beef expensive. How the fuck you get a plate of beef like that? Food of Barclays, whatever you call it, Barclays, what the fuck is called? I'm Puerto Rican, see? Beef and broccoli. You eat beef and broccoli. broccoli, you get a whole bunch of beef for three dollars. How the hell that happened? Yeah. When the steak expensive as hell. Come on, when you yeah. walk into these motherfucking Chinese restaurants, smell like we can't, st this the legendary part though. We can't stop it there. We're going to talk about um, uh, Garcia versus Rios. Watch a few highlights, critique the fighters on T-Street Controversy. This is T-Street Controversy Live. I cover every single major fight live. You know, I've interviewed this crazy man like at least a dozen times already. He's actually, out of everybody, I guess because I am from Philly, out of everybody in boxing, you know, and it's just always some crazy, like I just be, like I don't realize the crazy shit he be saying until like I get home. You know, and I start editing and stuff, and I'm just like, you know, you have to watch it over and over and over. And I'm like, what, what, what the fuck just happened in there? So in there, basically, put it this way. I'll still say it from the bottom of my heart. Angel Garcia is not racist. He's just racially insensitive. He's not racist, though. You would have to understand the culture in Philadelphia or more so on the um, the Upper East Coast area where it's taboo for a lot of people to talk about. But I can talk about it. Puerto Ricans and Mexicans, they get a pass for saying nigga. Not nigger with the ER on it, but nigga. But, you know, because he has a bad reputation and people just don't like him, they just say he on crack, he on coke and all that shit. Nah, he just a cool ass dude. And also, to let you in on some shit, he knows how to sell fights because he knew exactly what he'd be doing. But anyway, please subscribe. This is the legendary part, though. We got to listen to it for like another minute or so. like, Because I just was like, well, what the fuck just was... And the thing is, I put this video up late, even though this is me interviewing him. I put this up late, not understanding how golden the content was. So everybody else, my competitors, put the video up because there was other media members there, too. You know, because I already knew going into that. Um, OK, I guess we got to go back down memory lane. Right. It was his last fight. I guess we got to go back down memory lane. So I'm only going to show 30 minutes of it. But. We got to show you how we got here. So, Brandon Rios and, well, Danny Garcia and Brandon Rios are fighting uh, February, the bad February the 17th on Showtime to be the WBC mandatory for Keith Thurman. Now, we got to talk about where Keith Thurman is because Keith Thurman is going to return in somewhat April or so. It was pushed back from late February to March to April. I talked to Keith Thurman at Laura Goucher or was it Wilder Stavern? Anyway, you know, um... So when Thurman comes back, they're saying he'll likely fight Jesse Vargas. Then he has to fight Sean Porter. Then he has to fight the winner of this fight, you know, that we're going to talk about. It's crazy. But in the meantime, we got to talk about this situation because I really feel that he gets like a bad rap for this. Um, this fight March 4th, man. 
Danny Garcia, undefeated champion. Keith. We're not gonna watch the whole thing. I'm gonna get to the good part. I know that they remember me too. Daddy, right? You know, so, all right. Daryl right, so tail. this boy right here, right? This you know dude, ponytail. You're gonna talk shit, right? Talk the same shit, way, bitch. the same way that you used to wipe the shit off of yeah, Danny's ass when he was a child, right? When he was a little baby, you used to handle his shit, right? You used to handle his shit when he was in diapers, right? And now you're trying to handle his shit now. I'm the fucking you ain't champ. nothing but a loud mouth you Trump, man. Fucking, that's what I'm saying. Boy, keep you one time turning. Like Get your tickets I'm now. Like Come you through. Can't bite. Be here you March 4th. Because you know what, nigga? Like they said, nigga. Bitch ass nigga. Put his son to sleep. You from, you in the East let's Coast, see, now, let's bitch. Let's see, how, let's see how he talks when his son is laying down on a blue mat. We'll see how he do. He gonna fuck you up. He gonna try, bro. I know that. He gonna try, bro. I know he gonna try, bro. My nigga. I know he gonna try, he bro. Gonna fix it. You get a I know he gonna try, bro. the fucking mic off. But this is the time he's gonna turn fail. The fucking mic off. This is the time he's gonna fail. Listen, listen, young This dog. is the fight that you ain't supposed to be fucking with, man. Young, this ain't the one that you're supposed to be messing nigga. with. Listen, yeah. bitch. Okay. You getting fucked up. You need to sit your fucking ass down before you can beat the fuck up. Hey. Hey. Yap, 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 yap. Yap, 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 all your hype men, right? That's why I showed up in this motherfucking city, right? That's why I showed up in this city by my god. Y'all didn't notice. Y'all didn't give me my props on how cat quick I was getting through. Y'all seeing how I maneuvered through that shit? I saw that shit going down. I saw that shit going down. I saw that shit going down. I maneuvered my ass up there. Because I just was like, I had these cookies. And I was like right on the side chilling. Usually I like to say like stay like low key like in the back. You know what I'm saying? But I was in the front this time eating these cookies over there with the snacks. You need to sit your fucking ass down before you can pick the fuck up. Hey. Hey, yap, yap, yap. I like I like I like how uh Keith Thurman yeah. kept the class. Yeah, 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 yeah. I like how Thurman kept it classy though, because that was um Danny Garcia mom. And truth be told, it wasn't Danny Garcia that started the shit, it was his pop. But in in reality, that shit actually really, 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 really helped sell the flight net fight. Now, of course, you get that bad uh 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 publicity and also like i said there's that divide of people don't understand like where angel garcia grew up and where he's from it's like you you don't understand how that is like i grew up where he's from i used to work where i know all that shit it's just this, the way Ricans is you know you meet some Ricans and some shit like what's up my nigga it's it's you wouldn't understand it. it's like that up in new york too you wouldn't understand it you wouldn't understand it but however you know i noticed during fight week that he had a, a a handler you know like somebody making sure he wasn't going too far and saying certain certain shit it was the watson brother i forgot which one you know you know the two the the watching uh brothers sam watson sons it was one of them that was making sure like whenever angel garcia was giving an interview because the, the media was like right on him like walking up on him and everything like yo like he gonna say some crazy ass shit they was making sure they was like you know like watching everything he was saying and then making sure they cut off like uh like the interviews at like a certain time but yeah he a cool dude man he just get a bad rap because of that shit but this shit was hilarious and it did get crazy as shit we're gonna watch it again, and we're gonna and we gotta talk about the fight. This video is gonna be like twenty minutes long, so you know, my bad. But we're gonna talk about the fight. We're gonna talk about the division, and we're gonna talk about what's next for Danny Garcia or Brandon Rios if they win and or lose. Yeah. When the steak is expensive as hell, I'm Puerto Rican. See, you got beef. You beef You get a whole bunch of beef for three dollars. How the hell that happened? Yeah. When the steak is expensive as hell, come on, when you yeah. walk into these motherfucking Chinese restaurants, smell like cat, like cat piss. Killing cats in the basement, brother. <laughs> I got real to friends, bro. They told me that shit. They hate mm. that shit in America. Well, thank you for call that. Me Rex. Um, I'm bringing everything out your door. They call me Rex. I'm going to be a racist. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be a We got AK. We getting ready for this war. But My we, team, we got AK-47. We ready. We got mm -hmm. fucking ammunition. You motherfuckers want to go to war. We got guns, too. And we ain't scared. 
We ain't scared, and we not we not trying to threaten nobody. But we getting ready for the revolution too. We got guns, we got AK, we got machine guns, we got all that shit. Now, 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 at this point in time, you obviously can see I lost complete control of the interview. But anyway, man, let's move on. If you want to check that out, go watch it on the channel. That shit, that shit was crazy, wasn't it? But we got to go and look at, um, you know, what was going on with Danny Garcia. Now, listen, I was really, really, really sick that day. I was so, so upset I didn't make it to this fight. This would have been the biggest, the biggest fight I've ever been to, you know, and I just was. Mm. So it still hurts me to go back and watch some of these highlights of it. You know, I got my credentials for this fight two days before the fight. I was initially I was initially denied, but it's a long, crazy story. I had covered every aspect of the, of, of the fight up until this point, except Keith Thurman's media workout. I was at the first initial press conference where that shit pop, popped off, where um, Andrew Garcia called Keith Thurman, you know, bitch-ass nigga. Um, what else? Um, I covered the media workout. I was at all that shit, the fucking press conference. And I'm saying I got sick the day of the weigh-in. You know, and then it was the day of the fight where I just like I was immobile, I was debilitated. You know, I, I Danny Garcia fought a good fight. He didn't apply pride to apply the pressure enough until too late. You know, it was almost similar to uh Golovkin versus um uh Canelo, where you could tell Danny was respecting his power. Remember that? What, were, what round was that? Where Danny Garcia? Let's just watch it. This is to the end of round five. Garcia with a flurry. We're down the stretch here in round nine. And they are swinging for the fences. Under a minute remaining, Garcia with the right hand. Furman goes back to the body. Two of the best go the distance to unify. Furman has been down once in his career. Garcia has never been on the canvas, but they are throwing with bad intentions early. Oh, but there's a sweeping left hook by Furman. Just using those rangefinder jabs has helped oh, him in this one. That was a beautiful and a left hook and a right hand by Garcia. We've come to the end of round. Now, does that make you question, you know, um, Danny? I mean, uh, Keith Thurman's power a bit because we've seen, but maybe it is to step up in competition because he hasn't been active. And let's let's not talk about Keith Thurman too much. But basically, what I'm trying to say is, Danny Garcia was taking some tough ass shots. You know, Keith Thurman was hitting the shit out of him with some hard ass shit. So we've learned in the past that that um Danny Garcia is very resilient. He's got a chin. His chin is you know solidified. You know, and also he doesn't get like enough respect for his resume. You know, people say, well, he don't got no resume. You know, he ain't been fighting nobody, and he's been getting all these gifts. You know, even um, people feel that the cards for this fight, for his last fight with, um, you know, Thurman, was controversial. But, you know, while we're here, we might, well look at, Garcia with a flurry. we might as well go look at who he's fighting, and then we can finish talking about the fight. Brandon Rios is in a tough situation because, in a good situation in a way, because if he wins, right, he is Keith Thurman's mandatory. Ain't that crazy? Now, you're going to ask yourself, well, how did he get himself in that spot? Let's go look at his resume before we look at these highlights of his last fight where he didn't look so good. And this guy, Aaron Herrera, who he was fighting, was just stopped by Jesse Vargas. 34, 3 and 1, 25 KOs, 31 years old. You know, he used to train with, um, 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 Robert Garcia. You know, he's uh, his biggest fan is Eli Sekback. So, he's fighting Danny Garcia. He fought Aaron Herrera in this comeback fight. This was a PBC on Fox Sports 1. He was stopped by Timothy. Timothy Bradley was known as a light puncher. Timothy Bradley was going through a phase in his career at that time where people were like, yo, Timothy Bradley, be a boxer, move around like you did with Juan Manuel Marquez and stop trying to be this power, this pressure foot punching, power puncher that you were, which likely led to his retirement. So this was a fight where people thought it was going to be a boring fight, but they didn't. And, and Timothy Bradley was going to put on a boxing lesson, lesson, but they did not think that Brendan Rios was going to get knocked out by Timothy Bradley because of his chin. Who was calling me? I don't know who this is. I can't take that. My bad. Um, my bad. That's the personal phone. So when that rings, that's like a very important call. You know. Yes, hello. Yo, I'm doing a video, you son of a bitch. 
No, nah, I don't fucking got you, Bob. I'm doing a video. Damn, man, you made me fuck up my video, man. I'm going to call you back. Son of a bitch. I'm sorry about that, man. Hey, listen, that's what it is. Now, remember, I don't do no editing or anything like that. So, truth be told, I got three phones. I got an office phone. I got, like, a phone for all, like, this YouTube shit and everything. And I got a personal phone. So, when that personal phone ring, it's usually some important shit, like, for my pop or something. So, I'm a caregiver, too, you know, or something going on with my daughter. But, anyway, um, get back to what I was saying. When he fought Timothy Bradley, you know, he wasn't supposed to, he wasn't supposed to get knocked out, you know. Um, go full screen again, you know, and then he had this, you know, this fight with Mike Alvarado was a very good fight. This nasty Diego Chavez fight where he said he just, you know, I don't know, was he was losing that fight up until the uh, DQ, you know, then of course he had that Pacquiao fight. So he had a, he has a night, he had a nice little run, but he's got this reputation, you know, as pox, as, as a uh, boxing fan say, it's like, you know, Brandon Rios is a punching bag and this is going to be an easy fight for Danny Garcia and Danny Garcia is likely going to knock him out. Now, Brandon Rios has had this issue since he fought Manny Pacquiao of not staying in shape in regards to dropping too much weight in the week of or two weeks prior to the fight. You know, this is a guy who needs a strength and conditioning coach. You know, in his last fight, he just didn't look he just didn't look good. And I'm thinking like, you know, and, and in a way, I'm not going to lie. I'm a bit of a um, Brandon Rios fan because he always has good fights and he does have a chin. And, you know, he not no bitch. He's not going to quit. He's going to keep coming. So that's why I am a supporter of this Danny Garcia fight, even though a lot of people wanted Danny Garcia to fight a bigger name. And also Danny Garcia should have fought Sean Porter. You know, that's just why not fight Sean Porter. But I got a chance to talk to Keith Thurman about it. And Keith Thurman was saying basically that, um, you know, he agrees. I'm going to upload that video later. I got to make sure I do that. He agrees with Danny Garcia picking a fight like Brandon Rios because Brandon Rios is still a tough fighter no matter what. And also, um, if you don't take Brandon Rios seriously, he could likely knock you out. You see what I'm saying? Hold up. Let me do this, man, because sometimes they be messing with me, you know, and just, you know, when I'm just trying to motherfucking support the sport, sell the sport shit. So a lot of times I be having to do this because they be trying to hit me with these. Obviously, you know that in my business, you know, I've had tons of uh, copyright strikes, you know, that I've had to whew, whew, use all this legal karate on and everything. But whatever the case may be, we're doing this for the sport. So, you know, if you look at this fight, you know, and if you look at like his body and everything, he was he still wasn't in shape. And it's like this is a fight where you were selling yourself. Now, even though he's been heavily rumored to fight um, uh, Danny Garcia way before this. You know, still, it's just like, yo, bro, like, stay in shape. You know, show people that you're serious. To the point where you put something on social media, you can try to fraud. It's like Chavez Jr. did. Remember, Chavez Jr. trained and sold that fight on his end by getting in shape and fooling people to make us think, oh, shit, he really in shape, yo. This is going to be the best Chavez Jr. we ever seen with this fight. I'm thinking, like, well, damn. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, I wish you could see, like, how he looks in there. He's just flabby. You know, like for a 147 pound fighter, you know, so if you look at the way these highlights and the way he's fighting, you're going to tell yourself, well, wait a minute, you know, Danny Garcia is probably going to, you know, like stop him, you know? Well, no, man. Oh, he did stop um, Aaron Herrera. I'm tripping. I thought he went the distance with him. My bad. But regardless of the fact, he just looks sloppy, you know, and a lot of people are already thinking like, man, he's probably going to lose this fight. But. The crazy thing is, with looking at that resume once more, that's the point I was trying to get to before that fucking call got me, is how in the world is he number one contender? Now, listen to what I'm saying. Now, let me go right here for you guys. Let me go show y'all what I'm talking about. The WBC released their mandatories for all of the divisions yesterday. If you want to see it, the link is right in below you know in the description box but here's an article that i well the the press release i put out yesterday of the wbc talking about you know who's the mandatories for all the divisions so let's go down 100 let's go down to uh 147 pounds keith thurman champion keith thurman i'm gonna, I'm gonna highlight this for you guys champion keith thurman will uh will return in a voluntary title defense as he has recovered from his injury sean porter is the mandatory contender and danny garcia will fight brandon reels in a final elimination for the second mandatory due to the inactivity of thurman now this is not a final eliminator to say like what dominic brazil and uh, Jiro washington has 
this basically means that when Keith Thurman returns, he has to he'll get a voluntary fight. Then he has to fight Sean Porter. Then he has to fight the winner of Danny Garcia versus Brandon Rios. So once again, it's like, how in the blue hell is this guy, you know, a mandatory? Now I can understand that's the WBC. Like, okay, well, you know, we don't give a fuck because, uh, you know, Danny Garcia is just going to win anyway. You know, but what if Brandon Rios wins? Of course, people are going to be like, how the hell did he get into this spot? Crazy, right? Now, looking at Danny Garcia's resume, and, you know, I can, and I can get it. You know, I mean, I've been doing this for a long time. People are just going to say, well, of course you're going to say this because you're from Philly. But if you really, really, really look at it, going all the way back to Nate Campbell, you know. Now, however, he did lose this Ashley Theophane fight, in my, in my opinion, in my opinion. I'll, I'll say it. You know, but let me zoom in. No, I don't want that one. There we go. If you look at it, he did lose this fight, in my opinion. You can go watch this fight on uh, YouTube, by the way, back in 2010. You know, if you look at from Nate Campbell to um, Kendall Holt, Eric Morales, Amir Khan, you know, Eric Morales again. Now, these were two big fights at the time, these um, Eric Morales fights. You know, Zab Judah, who was on his last legs, but that was still a very good fight. Then the Lucas Matisse fight where he's like he was going to get slaughtered and he schooled Matisse. Mauricio Herrera, he got a gift, I admit. You know, then the Rod Salkos, which really pissed people off because he went from getting this gift right here, a lot of people feel, to this Rod Salka fight, you know, and they're like, what the fuck was happening? I know the deep story behind this, and basically he is supposed to fight Lamont Peterson instead of Rod Salka, but ended up fighting Lamont Peterson anyway. A lot of people felt he lost this fight. I felt he won that fight, and I feel if Lamont Peterson fights that same fight against um, Errol Spence, he'll lose that fight too. You know, then he went on to fight Paulie Malignaggi. You know, a lot of people didn't like that fight. I didn't either. You know, Robert Guerrero, I was like, okay, that's a good fight at the time. And it was a good fight, you know, watching it. The Samuel Vargas fight was a comeback fight, a fight for him to have in Philly and for charity. And then he fought Keith Thurman right after that. You see what I'm saying? So, you know, it is, you know, it is a very, very respectable. And, yes, that's a Hall of Fame resume if in the future when you look at guys like, you know, come on, be honest, Timothy Brightley. You know, even though he's got those Pacquiao fights and that Marquez, still, like, look at those names or no names, whether they were past their prime or in their prime or just out or just getting into. It's just still, you know, especially at Amir Khan, you know. But I feel that uh, Danny Garcia is going to win. The fight is taking place in Vegas. I'm wondering if maybe they tried to get this fight in the Cali area, you know, but it wasn't no venues open because Vegas, this is like, okay, you know this is going to be a good fight, right? You know, but realistically, like, why Vegas? I don't know. Whatever. You know, um, Teach Tree Controversy. This is Teach Tree Controversy Live. I cover every single major fight live. Please subscribe.